All right, so we learned that we had our plan in our sketch. That's the first thing we put into Canvas. Then we needed to start gathering assets. And these are all the external assets I gathered, whether they're just for inspiration, like these expressions, or whether they're going to be helpful effects as part of our story. So I plan to use some of these smoke aspects and these flames. I've already used some of these background aspects. And we built an assets file, which should have many, many, many layers. And just for your sanity, it's helpful to organize them into groups that you can turn on and off. So right now I'm working in the book layer. And with the expressions, I'm cycling through these mat expressions. And that's just how animation goes. My goal is to get to this portion where the book actually touches down and then starts to glow because then I can actually start to use layer styles. Glow effects are very easy. Drop shadows are very easy to add to assets without having to create multiple layers. And then once I find the staging I want, I'm on frame five here. And at frame five, I got to keyframe number two. So that means I started with frame one, it took three more frames before I got to frame two in my keyframe, just for storytelling. And that's so it, it feels a little bit smoother. If I want to test that, all I have to do is kind of turn on and off these eyeballs, right? And I can kind of see how that animation works. Once I have more of this, then I can set a timing on these eyeballs and figure out the speed for it. Is it going to be three frames per second? Is it going to be five frames per second? Is it going to be 24 frames per second, which is professional animation? Usually GIFs are, are between three and five frames per second. All right. So how do I continue? Let's look at it a different way and from a different perspective because it gets very repetitive. So if you look at the assignment, both on the assignments page for assignment three, so if we just go right to it, remember this is where I give you like extra sources and you have the assignment sheet and you have the link to where you post it and then you have this link to a digital honors mentorship presentation on GIF animating in Photop. But also I repeat that link because it's very helpful, especially for this freeware section. I repeat that link right here. So if you click on that, this gives a past student's perspective on step-by-step -step how to animate using freeware. And it starts with Photop, and all they're doing is they're using their storyboard sketch as their assets, because it basically has all the components for all their frames. And then they're showing you how you can animate those nine frames into an animatic. And it's pretty simple. So let's, let's just do that, or I'm going to do that, just to show you. Because my animation, just like your animation, is going to have a lot of specific quirks to it. But animating your storyboard sketch is pretty straightforward. First, you need to open your storyboard sketch in Photop. So I'm going to make sure these are saved. And then I'm going to close these. That should help clear the cache memory too. Then I'm going to open Photop again. And I'm going to drag in my storyboard sketch. It's just a JPEG. It's taken from a, a camera. Okay. So this is my assets. They drew it. And then they show it, the action. Now we need to separate them to fill the screen, right? So I need to organize my assets. So how do I do that? It's kind of tricky, but we're going to do it kind of sloppily. All I do is I'm going to use this, the rectangular marquee, and I'm going to select around my box and hit Command-J. And then I'm going to do Option-Command-T and I'm going to drag it to fill the frame. But before that, I need to crop it down to a square, right? So I'm going to go to Image Canvas Size, 
and I'm going to make it the same number of pixels high as it is wide. In order to do that, I need to uncheck the padlock here. And that will allow me to match the width and the height exactly. I'm not even going to inches because I don't care. Right? I just need it to all be square. Okay, now I can take that duplicate I can grab this, I can duplicate it, Command J, Option Command T, and then just make it really big. Like fill the frame. I'm going to fill it so I don't see any of the red anymore. And then kind of center it. Then I turn that one off and I do it again to the base layer. Command J, Option Command T. This is just organizing my assets. And by organizing them, I'm organizing them, placing them. I can straighten them out. I can even make them match. If I want to be really exacting about it, I can leave that first layer open and then take its opacity down, have it floating above everything like an onion skin. And then as I make new layers, I transform them to match that first layer. You see, just like that. Then I turn it off and I go to the next one. I just have to suffer through that ghost being there. I duplicate. I Option Command T. Come on, there we go. And I stretch it to match the one underneath. I have two kids. The first kid, I took a picture of him like once every three days or so. And then I animated his growth. So I had a year. The second kid, I took a picture every day. And because I learned from the first one, I put him on the same bath mat every time. So I had the same background. And then I had 365 pictures from his first year. And this is how you would animate that time lapse of their growth. I would just line up his eyes every time. So you get better at it as you're doing it. You learn kind of what the hiccups are, how you can improve your process. But if you start with an ugly kid, you end up with an ugly kid. That's just how it goes. Okay, Option Command T. There we go. So kind of lining them up, right? Option Command T. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't duplicate it first. Command J, then Option Command T, and fill it up. So right now I'm at the center point of my nine keyframes, and that should be your fifth frame if you're just animating your keyframes, right? So I have, I have all five right here. And as you trust yourself a little bit more, you don't have to test it as much. But this is, this is exactly the same thing I'm doing with my finished animation. But I am moving all the finished frames onto a stage. Because unlike animating just my keyframes, my finished frames are a combination of multiple layer assets. So it allows for a lot more complexity and ambition. And now Photopea is getting used to me. It's not taking as long to process these changes, even though I'm adding to its memory. So that's nice. All right, and we're almost to this step, which is simply to resize your frames into their own layers in that student tutorial. And this is my last frame now. Don't worry, I can fix that.
All right, so now I'm at my last frame. Okay, now I can turn off the background. That's not needed anymore. And now I'm going to set this top frame to be at 100% opacity. And to do a quick animation test, I just click on the eyeballs. And that's it. Okay, now how do I actually turn this into a GIF? Because that's what this tutorial is about. I need to use an external website because Photopea does not have a GIF maker within it like Photoshop does. Photoshop has a tool called Timeline that allows for animating, right? So it's just a little bit of a pain, but it helps you understand it. I'm going to save each of these as their own JPEG. So like it says here, once they are all separated into different layers and size, you need to save them individually as JPEG files and name them one through nine so they can be organized. This is my first frame, so I'm going to say file export as JPEG. And I'm going to call it one. <laughs> and it's going to go to where all your exported files go, which is your downloads. So that's one. Then I'm going to turn that one off. And I'm going to say file export as JPEG. I'm going to name this one 2. Save. It goes pretty fast. I'm going to turn that one off. And I'm going to say file. Export as JPEG. Lots of repetition. This is number 3. Which nicely matches the layer. So number 4. Export as. You can always check your downloads folder. Make sure you're not saving them as PSDs. That they're all coming in as JPEGs. File export as JPEG 4, 5, file export as JPEG. You get the idea. 5. I want to show you that this, this works. 6, file export as JPEG 6. And like I said, earlier animation is very organized methodical you have to have a plan you have to think about how to carry it out efficiently and you can't really lose concentration while you're doing it without making lots of mistakes question okay so as i'm building i have seven out of nine right almost there export as jpeg these are just like you took the photos in your camera and now you got to get the camera photos onto the film strip and run through a projector right so it can start to play it and this is number nine Nine frames is the minimum you can have for this animation, right? If you only animate your keyframes, you get basically an animatic. Okay, so now I have all of these. As it says in the tutorial created by your fellow students, um, you need to organize them well. So what does that mean? It helps to make a folder and put them in the folder. So I call these my test frames. Then I put all nine in there. Luckily, one through nine in a Mac operating system. Ah, it's so annoying. <laughs> Let's do it as a list. One through nine in a Mac operating system will always stack when listed by name. So if I open that up, you know, they're in order. Okay, now I know where those are. Let's just for safety move them onto the desktop. Now I need to go to this outside site easygif.com maker you can open the link this is a really basic frame by frame timeline editor so I'm going to choose the files I can just drag and drop them in it's helpful if you do it in order so you don't have to move them later there's nine files it's uploading them and if we look at the mentorship presentation, then we can set the timing on it. 